Over 1.5 million American troops were deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan from 2001 to 2011. Many returned with visible scars of war, but for some, their injury is hidden. At some of the military bases throughout those regions, waste materials were disposed of in so-called burn pits. Breathing fumes from those fires appears to have damaged the health of countless veterans. Barry Peterson has their story. Dan Gentic struggles with what most of us don't even think about, taking a breath. One full breath in, blast, whoo, all the way, all the way, all the way, empty. An Army veteran, he's part of a lung study at National Jewish Hospital in Denver, but he's also part of something much larger. He was one of thousands of men and women who served in Iraq and Afghanistan and may be sick or dying because this was the air they had to breathe, smoke from massive burn pits next to their bases. What did it smell like? Kind of like when you burn plastic, you get that acrid smell. Depending on how strong the winds are, the smoke could be pretty strong. So you just constantly either saw the smoke or smelt it um, pretty much every day, all day. All day, all night, all day, all night. Yes. You're breathing that stuff in. Yes. Into the burn pits went things like batteries, chemicals, heavy metals, arsenic. A report by a special inspector general put it bluntly. It is indefensible that U.S. military personnel who were already at risk of serious injury and death when fighting the enemy were put at further risk from the potentially harmful emissions from the use of open-air burn pits. Even worse, the report detailed millions spent on incinerators to properly dispose of waste, but many sat idle next to the active burn pits. Dan was deployed at Balad Air Base in Iraq, where an Air Force expert issued a warning about the burn pits there and added, it is amazing that this burn pit has been able to operate without restrictions over the past few years. I think at the end of the day, you know, the data look good in terms of your lung function. It hasn't gotten better, but it hasn't gotten worse. Dr. Cecile Rose is a pulmonologist and occupational medicine doctor who is principal investigator of the five-year lung study funded by the Department of Defense. I think our study is really designed to understand what the spectrum of lung diseases are that can occur following these inhalational hazardous exposures in theater. Um, and then... That's called breathing when you're... Uh, <laughs> that's right. She has already seen some results. We have described a spectrum of diseases that are related to deployment. They weren't there before, and they are clearly there after people have returned from these arid and extreme environments. But it's not as simple as pointing to a plume of toxic smoke. And those potential hazards include things like desert dust, very intense sandstorms, a huge amount of diesel exhaust and diesel particulate, paints that may cause lung disease in just the course of their regular job duties. Dan is not alone. The Veterans Administration set up a voluntary burn pit registry. More than 180,000 have signed up. But of the 12,000 filed claims to the VA connected to burn pits, only about 2,500 have been accepted. And a victim's lawsuit against contractors who oversaw some of the pits was rejected by the Supreme Court. One of the denied VA claims was Jennifer Kepner, who believed her fatal pancreatic cancer was caused by burn pit exposure in Iraq. Is there severe enough consequences? Ask the family of Jennifer Kepner, who died from pan pancreatic cancer. Her congressman, Raul Ruiz from California, got her family survivor benefits, but he didn't stop there. A Harvard-trained emergency room doctor, he has launched a legislative blitz to get sick veterans' benefits now and not wait for more years and more studies. There is enough. There's enough to act on it. When people are exposed to an illness and they come in dying on a gurney in the emergency department, you don't have to wait and, and for that pristine science to determine that this patient is sick and they're dying and you need to act on it and take care of the, the veteran, the patient. That should be our common sense approach when you put veterans in the center of the VA system. Ruiz sees a parallel in American history, the use of Agent Orange in the Vietnam War. It's a powerful herbicide spread widely to kill jungle foliage. <laughs> veterans who were exposed and got sick years after fought the VA for benefits, a battle that took decades to win.
be accountable be responsible do what's right for our veterans give them the care that they need and if they don't then they should be held accountable i don't know if they will be i don't know how long people will live how long will they survive to well that's to my, make the va accountable well that's my concern we cannot let burn pit exposure veterans be the Vietnam veterans exposed to Agent Orange of our generations. We can't do that. In April, the U.S. Central Command reported nine burn pits creating toxic smoke, but says 13 burn pits at the moment are burning non-hazardous waste. They also say they could change at any time if battlefield conditions change. A Department of Defense spokeswoman added, we are concerned that toxins from burn pit emissions may pose health risks and we are assessing potential long-term impacts. A skeptical Ruiz worries that newly deployed soldiers are still at risk. Is this still going on? It's still going on. It's still going on. And when you think that the military is willing to expose men and women, our young sons and daughters and brothers and sisters to burn pits simply because they say it is inconvenient and not cost-effective for them, it's shameful. It's shameful. So in the years ahead, there may be even more like Dan, no longer a father who can go on a hike with his kids. I used to be very active, um, dirt bike riding, mountain bike riding, hiking with the family, very active with my kids. Now I don't do any of that. Don't um, or can't? Can't. For CBS This Morning, Saturday, Barry Peterson, Denver. We're in existence, and it doesn't seem that much further down the line than what we saw in 2001 down at Ground Zero. And all of the people now suffering, the first responders, the rescuers, the people working to rebuild down there, this should not be happening. The, the, that's an interesting parallel. It's a story we've been covering for a long time here at CBS News with some of the great producers here in varying ways of different people impacted around the country by burn pits. But it makes sense when you're burning chemicals, weapons of war, plastics, other things, mm. it, goes, it goes into the air and then it goes somewhere. The question is whether you're going to make it right. I thought the one word that they use in the report, indefensible, one of the more important ones there.